We got him! Welcome to Find Your Outdoors. On this week's episode, our crew heads out to Sweetwater, Texas with Kids Outdoors to film some very special kids hunting big game exotics. We're hunting at the 345 Ranch where owners Steve and Jan Smith have donated a thousand acre high fence for the sole purpose of hosting Kids Outdoors guided trips. This property is home to an abundance of trophy exotics like black buck, Audad, Texas doll sheep, axis deer, fallow deer, and even wild hogs. Kids Outdoors is a nonprofit organization that's focused on creating unique hunting and fishing experiences for kids who suffer from severe health conditions, special needs, and many who are terminally ill. Let's head out to 345 Ranch to catch the action. 345 Ranch, right in the heart of West Texas. The prairie skies are high, the stars at night are bright, and this kid's outdoors dedicated ranch is flourishing with trophy exotic animals. I'm Steve Smith, this is my wife Jan. Hey guys. And we're actually right now at the Double S Ranch, uh, which is a family ranch. We had, uh, one of our sons had some of his buddies out from Arkansas, and they were hunting with us, and, and they, some of them had their kids with them. And he asked me, uh, with one of the guys that was out here said, would you consider letting some handicap or, or terminally ill kids hunt on your ranch? And I thought a minute and I said, yes, uh, tell me about it. And he said, well, I've, I've hooked up with a group out of Alabama called Car Kids Outdoors, uh, Carol Clark. Our first hunt was a, a, a hunt that really sealed the deal. Hey, bud. Bailey? Yeah, Bailey. How you doing? I met you last weekend. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, my name is Jason Shackelford, and my son's name is Bailey Shackelford, and we're from New Deal, Texas, just north of Lubbock. I met Jan and Steve through my now sister-in-law, uh, Becky, who owns Coyote Store, and she got me in touch with uh, Jan, and then from then on, we, I made one phone call, and here we go. I've taken my youngest son with me uh, hunting for about the past 15 years. Well, let's see, he's 12 years old, so he's been hunting with me every year since he was born. And I've taken Bailey with me, but when we go to the deer lease, all he can do is ride around in the pickup with me and then just kind of watch for the animals and never been really able to shoot because he can't hold a gun or... And whenever I got in touch with uh, kids, the National Kids Outdoors, they, I learned that they had the apparatuses that could make everything work. And man, it, it enlightened me. I really wanted to come and I wanted to see Bailey be able to shoot and be able to do what I love to do and partake in everything in life that I love. Whenever, let's see, I guess whenever he was 13 months old, he started having seizures. And it started off, they said they were complex fibril seizures, and, but they put him on medicine. Well, then it developed into epilepsy. And then we found out he has autism. And then we found out that <clears throat> he has a, it's called dystonia, makes him shake real bad all the time. That's why we can't gain weight, any of that. And then he also has a fatal genetic disorder called NCL. They found half of it. And as soon as we find the other half in his genes, then that's whenever the fatal start taking over on that part. Uh, we've actually, oh man, we've had seizures and multiple seizures and <clears throat> ever since he was 13 months old, we've gone anywhere from five to six to eight a day down to none for two or three months when we finally get all the medicine right. And then we went in, I guess this last year, year before we went down to Cook's down in Fort Worth and we, they installed a a deep brain stimulator system in him. He has a generator mounted in his chest and he has a probe sticks in each, either side of his head up here into his brain and that continuously shocks him on different pulses so it slows down to shaking. And other than that, it's just 
a bunch of medicine. <clears throat> Just trying to keep him healthy and keep him the way we can. Bailey, we're glad to have you, buddy. I guarantee you, we're going to have some fun, aren't we? Okay. Aren't you live? Hey, you ready? Shoot. Boom! We got him! People don't understand what you take for granted every day. Until you get around a special needs child or a terminally ill child that has nothing to look forward to, but another day of what they went through yesterday. Here we go. You ready? Don't y'all take it, fellas. He's ready. Push, push your button. Yep. Well, we woke up this morning and it's a beautiful day and we're I know they've got a whole lot of exotic rams out here on the on this ranch and Bailey's looking forward to going and I'm looking forward to going and uh, hopefully we're gonna get us one and get back with it Steve's guides have spotted a Texas doll sheep grazing the north end of the 345 ranch they get Bailey ready for the hunt and hit the dirt roads Due to Bailey's condition, he can't sit for a long period of time in a hunting blind, so the apparatus is placed in the back of a truck and they do a stalk and drive hunt. Went out and did a little prowling around and did a little scouting in the area. We'd seen a couple of sheep in that area, and so we thought we'd take Bailey over there and do a little looking around and see if we got lucky enough to get in range on one. And, Sure enough, after a little while, we kind of scouted and looked and had a couple a couple chances, but not really the right one. And next thing you know, it all kind of worked out. All right, Dan. Get him. Get him. Keep turning, Tolan. Keep turning. Right, right, right there. there. Right there. Ready? Here we go. You ready? All right, y'all take it, fellas. He's ready. Push it. Push your button. Yep. Take him, Dad. Hey, buddy. Are you ready? Take him. Take him. Push your button. Push your button, buddy. Push it and hold it, buddy. Woo! Hey, man! First shot! You like it? First shot! You like it? Hey, Woo! buddy! Give me five! All right! All right. All right. Picture of you, right quick. Okay. Yeah. Good, Good job, buddy. Good job, Bobby. Bam. Oh, we got oh, the brass. Y'all got the brass. Look at that. Mr. Rick, can you come get the? You know how to handle this gun. Can you come get the brass? Yes, sir. Bailey did an excellent job, and he closed the deal up, and it was a it was a real good hunt. We all had a really really good time, and I know Bailey was excited. I think that was his first animal harvest, so. Uh, we're all real proud and excited for Bailey. Over red above the fireplace, hey, please. Uh, like <laughs> <laughs> right, you hear about things, you you hear the stories, but until you witness it and are involved in it, it doesn't soak in. And when you do it. And, you know, I've killed stuff all over the country. Uh, I've all killed stuff the world. in Africa, you know, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, uh, a lot of places in the United States. If I never fire another shot, then so it be. But for me to be able to see kids that want to hunt and don't get that opportunity because of handicap, that is just not right. Bubba, you bring your load.
After a successful first day at the 345 Ranch, Rick heads out early to meet Steve and Will for another morning hunt. The guys set up the blind on a nice ridge side. Hunting is Will O'Neill. Will is a leukemia patient who's been battling his condition for over two years. An avid outdoorsman, Will is in high hopes of killing his first trophy exotic. Well, uh, this morning we we went out. We saw a lot of whitetail. Almost every one of them had an was an antlered buck. Saw some really nice ones. Unfortunately, no exotics walked out. But later on this evening, we'll be going out again. So hopefully. Hopefully we can get it done then. After an unsuccessful morning, Steve and Rick have moved Will to a new shooting house overlooking a food plot for an afternoon hunt, and it wasn't long before a trophy black buck appeared to be walking in, but eased off over the ridge side. After about two hours had passed, a herd of female black buck and one trophy moved into the field, grazing just out of shooting distance. Don't push that bow. I'm going to put the safety off. He stopped over in the bush. I don't know what he just stayed because I hit him. I missed him. He went down. He went down. We're going to go get a, hopefully get Kyle a black buck. Let's load up and go get them, boys. We're just going to eat just a couple of us in there and get set up. So we don't go through this. Little dude, too far to reach out, dude, because we can turn around the other way and bring it. It's the third morning at 345 Ranch, and Steve is taking Kyle out after a trophy black buck. After getting the blind and shooting apparatus set up, the hunt is on, rain moves in with daybreak which could typically hinder animal movement. But it wasn't long before a trophy black buck popped out into the open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a gun like this? Yeah. Go, hey! <laughs> Woo! What do you think? What do you think? 
You ever seen a black buck, much less got to shoot a black buck? <laughs> yes, sir, he was. He showed up in the corner and then he disappeared and then he showed back up in the corner and then that rain come in. I thought maybe he'd bet it down. And he finally came back and reappeared back in that corner over there. So that's where Kyle had to make a long shot and he got him down. It's probably a 150 yard shot in the rain with not good conditions for this type hunt because of the uh, shooting apparatus we had to, had to use. Kyle had been in a bike wreck and, and uh, his neurosurgeon told him he, he had a fracture on his uh, eye socket and his, his skull. And the doctor said no good shooting guns uh, with, without ear protection and you can't hold the gun. So we had to improvise with the shooting apparatus that we have. Uh, and and then it went out on us in the field and the solenoid so the trigger pull wouldn't do it. So Kyle had to lean out of the blind uh, and, and stretch out to get his finger on the trigger. And uh, it really was a cool deal and a real nice uh, uh, black buck and a, and a nice harvest. So Kyle, we're real proud of you, buddy. And you hung in there. And I know you probably, when that rain started, thinking, well, <laughs> Another another day of hunting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but it, it was a great hunt. Yeah, we had a lot of fun out here. It's more to it than just pulling the trigger. And spending a weekend with this whole mix of, of, of different folks is, it's it's as good, like Jan says, good for us, but, but these kids. I think what Stephen and I truly want to emphasize is it's life-changing. Anytime you, you uh, viewers of this show, have a chance to work or volunteer or do anything with someone who has greater needs than you or your community or whatever, do it. Your, re your rewards are really, really great. Land management, sustainable habitats, food plots, natural resources, financing. Southern Ag Credit presents Land Talk, hosted by Alex Reiser on Find Your Outdoors TV. Hi, welcome to this week's segment of Land Talk, brought to you by Southern Ag Credit. I'm your host, Alex Reiser. Today we want to give you a little history about Southern Ag Credit and let you know who we are. Southern Ag Credit is part of the Farm Credit System which was created in 1916 and we specialize in long-term real estate financing. Farm Credit System is a nationwide system which is a network of borrower-owned lending cooperatives and specialized service organizations that provide credit and related services for agricultural and rural America. That's right, unlike commercial banks we are owned by our borrowers and when getting a loan with Southern Ag Credit you receive ownership in Southern Ag Credit. But what does that mean for you? Well, first, that means you get voting rights within Southern Ag Credit by helping us elect our board of directors. But why is that important? Well, at Southern Ag Credit, we pay a portion of our annual net income back to our borrowers. The amount paid back is determined by our board of directors. I don't know of many banks paying their money back to their borrowers, but at Southern Ag Credit, we do. Also, unlike commercial banks here at Southern Ag Credit, we offer long-term land loans up to 30 years with long-term fixed rates and no prepayment penalties. Most commercial bank loans are going to go out 12 or maybe 15 years and put you on a three or five year balloon. Our products here at Southern Ag Credit are designed and driven to fit your needs and desire to own recreational hunting property. Finally, one of the most important aspects of the land purchase process is the appraisal process. Here at Southern Ag Credit, we do not charge our borrowers for an appraisal when purchasing a hunting or recreational property. Our appraisers at Southern Ag Credit are highly trained to value property from dirt, timber, and any improvements that may exist on the property you're purchasing. At Southern Ag Credit, we're land people who truly help you stand on your investment and offer the products to meet your outdoor desires. Tune in next week to Land Talk when we hear real life testimonials from Southern Ag Credit borrowers and how we turned their dream of owning recreational hunting property into a reality. See you folks. Well, our crew had a great time filming Will, Blake, and Kyle kill their big game at the 345 Ranch. It's always a special moment to see the smiles on the kids' faces when they claim that trophy. And we want to thank Carol and Rick Clark for all the hard work they do to make these hunts happen for kids outdoors. And thanks also to Steve and Jan Smith for providing the land and resources to make hunts like these possible. Join us next week on Find Your Outdoors as FYO Pro Staff member Ryan Fiveash and our good friend Matt Pitts try to bag Ryan's first ever turkey. See you then. <laughs>